Good morning. Let me just say that it was a crazy day and I enjoyed the hell out of playing Outriders. What's up guys, it's your boy Damone and welcome back to another video. Today's video we're going to be talking about kind of a before you buy, first impressions, initial review uh, of Outriders. And before we get into that guys, I want to send a special shout out to Square Enix for sending me an early review copy. Uh, this allowed me to get my hands on the game a little bit earlier and just go ham. Uh, I was able to clear the content. Um, it took me about two, 25 to 30 hours to clear the actual campaign and that this is me just, you know, doing some farming, right? running through the actual campaign itself and just playing for the story um, and that's it and then also another shout out to Nvidia I got the opportunity to test GeForce Now and what GeForce Now is is like if you guys have access to like a potato PC and you don't necessarily have access to a console GeForce Now is a, a service that allows you to basically stream the game from their kind of hood right and you can basically play from home without having a crazy computer which is also very very nice so if you guys are looking for a way to play Outriders without having to spend a thousand dollars to try to hunt down a freaking rtx graphics card uh nvidia geforce now can be the way to go so now there we got the formalities out of the way let's talk about outriders and talk about the things that i absolutely enjoyed sure this game has some flaws but we're not going to focus on those we're going to focus on the things that i actually enjoyed playing so you guys can have a better idea of whether or not you should purchase this game first off just let me say that i was extremely 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 excited with the fact that the actual game is way better than the demo um, there was a big fear that I had when I played through the demo because of the limited scope of the demo uh, what I mean by that is there was only a limited amount of types of gear that you can get you couldn't mod your equipment uh, the crafting system wasn't even present and a lot of the key systems and features in the game like monster hunts and contracts uh, weren't available as well so I was a little bit afraid that like most games when they release a demo the demo was just basically Basically what the game had to offer fortunately when I started the game and I ended up in the world running around combat felt a lot smoother than what it felt like when I played through the demo less clunky a lot more responsive taking cover was a lot easier for me and little things like the appearance of my armor as I was even low level as I started a brand new account started to look a lot different there were a lot more armor designs weapons prototypes like there was just a ton of different stuff that really made me feel like as i was playing through the game my decisions and choice of equipment and stats actually really mattered also a really good thing about the game is the class that i chose is the pyromancer uh, when i played in the demo i happened to play everything um granted things have probably drastically changed with each of the individual classes being that there were four more abilities added to each individual class right because you're able to level up you'll be able to get all of your abilities by the time you hit level 22 and as you do that it's up to you to define and customize how you're going to build your character and building your character is an insanely important part of the game. Um, in future videos where I talk about things that you definitely shouldn't pay attention to to make your experience of traveling through the world a lot easier uh, or a lot more simple, I would say. <laughs> Not necessarily easy because this game does get insanely challenging. I spent an hour and a half yesterday trying to beat this freaking boss. <laughs> I was kicking my butt and everybody saw it on the stream. It was a great time when we finally beat it. However, when you look at your equipment, uh, there's a lot of things that you want to take into consideration. First, when you look at your firearms, there are key stats that also matter. You have things like Weapon Life Leech, which allows you to heal yourself just from shooting. Skill Life Leech, which increases the amount of heal that you get when utilizing your abilities. And then other perks like Close Range Damage, Cooldown Reduction, you know, stuff like that that allows you to use your abilities more frequently. On top of that, you really want to pay attention to your perks, those neat things underneath the weapon that give you some unique opportunities to customize your character. The same thing is going to apply to your armor when also building your perfect character. And after you get to a certain point in the game, you guys can customize and change these mods, as you can see here. These mods range from different effects in combat, and they allow you to augment and modify your skills so you can play your class the way that you want. Spent a lot of time really trying to figure out what exactly I'm going to do with my Pyromancer and whether I want him as kind of more of a 
mercenary run and gun with some magic or like a full mage combo but deciding that in when while playing outriders is a ton of fun and i think it opens up the floor to a ton of customization options and i can't wait to try the other classes as well not to mention that we also have access to a skill tree which i spend a considerable amount of time trying to figure out how i was going to build my character because as you guys go through your skill tree it has a ton of different perks that you can apply to your character that will fundamentally change the way that your particular character plays you're not limited or locked into any particular build or play style here it's ultimately up to you are you building more for co-op are you looking to build more of a healer type class these are things that you can definitely do so toss that it all in a bag in terms of your weapon choices whether you're using machine guns whether you're using sniper rifles whether you're focusing on melee whether your primary role is to deal damage or to heal your party these are things that are entirely up to you and with these things i think it makes outriders a really enjoyable experience in terms of actual combat itself the combat felt pretty responsive the ai also responded very well to me thinking that i was superman and dying an insane number of times trying to figure this thing out overall flow of progression in the game is simple kill this get this drop move to the next stage as you go through this you'll advance through world ranks and as you go through these world tiers the difficulty and your loot chance and drop rate will increase so the higher your world tier the better your loot and I also made the mistake of thinking that this game was easier than anticipated until I got to about world tier 8. Then things started to get a little dicey. <laughs> But these world tiers and these difficulties will test your ability to understand the mechanics of the game. However, for those of you guys who are not looking for a difficult experience, you are free to choose what world tier you want to leave it on. So if you're just looking for a story playthrough, you can leave it on story mode or you guys can put it on easy or normal and then just kind of enjoy the game. For those of you guys who are looking for a challenge, you guys can just leave the setting to just have the game automatically adjust to your world tier as you advance your world tier and things will get crazy as the tiers go up. If you guys haven't seen my, my true endgame Outriders video where I talked about the full progression of Outriders, there's also an endgame mode where after you beat the game, you, you'll then start to participate in these things called Expeditions, which have 15 more tiers that will allow you to get some of the best gear in the game and access the hardest content in the game, which of course is the Eye of the Storm. Traveling through Enoch, gathering gear, killing mobs offered a very, very hearty challenge, and it was a ton of fun to do, and I still want to finish uh, leveling up even after I beat the game because it's just enjoyable. I feel like they hit the right spot in terms of loot and drops just because it feels like drops are readily available. Like you're getting drops all of the time. And I think the... I think the joy in playing Outriders is figuring out what to do with those drops. How are you going to maximize your damage? How are you going to make the perfect class? How are you going to make it so, you know, your class is more of a team player? And kind of figuring out all of those little things in between is really, really what makes Outriders shine. Because the game wasn't based too heavily on RNG like some other games like this that I've played, this has made really, like, going through and killing stuff a lot more enjoyable than anticipated. Uh, because of the significant challenge that I found the game added as I got into the higher world tiers, I didn't necessarily feel a need to go back and repeat stages as I was just going through the main campaign, because the main campaign at higher world tiers is challenging enough. And of course, as you might have guessed, the higher the world tier, the more challenging the game becomes. One thing that I do wish that they would have done during the campaign is had a little bit more monster variety. But outside of that, I think that the landscapes that you guys travel will travel through if you haven't traveled through Enoch yet were incredible and just beautiful. And you had the opportunity to see some crazy scenes and, of course, fight some huge bosses. All in all, I'd give this game probably a high 7 or 8 out of 10. Uh, what would make it a 10 for me is more monster variety, more skill augments, and even more in-game content. I know it sounds crazy, but I'm kind of a glutton for punishment in these types of grinding games. 
so with that i am still enjoying my time in enoch and i can't wait to get to the end of the game the end end of the game at the hardest difficulty levels to see what kind of gear and stuff and loot they have when you guys see what kind of mods and craziness that you guys can create with the setup i think you guys are going to be truly truly amazed but with that being said guys i will be streaming this on twitch at twitch.tv forward slash demone kim uh we'll probably stream this on youtube so we can get it on to the youtube side as well but if you guys got any questions comments concerns definitely let me know in the comment box below and i'll be happy to assist and we will see you guys in the next video peace